it's very striking that pornography is a part of so many of these crime scenes that the police find. Um, and then, finally, I think very, this is very important, we actually have the testimony of lots of men who have committed uh, sexual abuse. What had happened is I had been looking at pornography and, and, and thinking about pornography and I was walking across the uh, college campus and I seen this lady pull up and park her car. So I got in her car and hid out in the back of her car and then when uh, she came back out, I came up over the back seat and put a knife to her throat. I uh, had these images in my mind of, of the girls that I had seen in the magazines and uh, I uh, forced this woman to uh, perform oral sex on me, which I had seen being done in the magazines. I had a, a real vivid image of the girls had smiles on their faces and stuff like that. And when, uh, even though the woman that I was raping was crying, to me, I had these, these pictures implanted in my mind and I didn't see, see the, the, the pain and, and, and the anger and, and the, the hate that I was putting her through. All I could see was these smiling faces. There's more current research that shows that even the pornography that doesn't involve violence, not the so-called aggressive pornography, but the objectifying pornography, the Playboy and Penthouse kind of pornography, um, that, that that also changes men's attitudes in a very negative way towards women and their willingness to act out violence on women. It wasn't really hardcore pornography, but it, it was, uh, I think it was like penthouse. I was trying, I remember I was trying to get my victims to enjoy it like I was. Give them the mindset, well look how good this is, doesn't this look good? I felt like it gave me a little bit more ability to do a little more explicit acts with my victims than if I wouldn't have had it. To prolong the assault? Yeah, I remember like that. Yeah. That it did prolong a lot of the assaults. It made it more intense. Think you'd like that? A lot more intense. It made it more violent, too. Violent in the way I didn't care. I didn't care what I did to anybody. We know from research in 12 cities all across America that the sex crimes and violent crimes increase significantly in the area where these sex shops go in, adult bookstores, X-rated theaters, uh, etc. Violent crime in America against women is at epidemic proportions. The molestation rate of children is at epidemic proportions. My brother-in-law always had pornographic books. He always had the magazines. He would show both myself, my sister, um, these dirty books of men and women having sex. He was always at the, at the adult bookstores. And I, I believe he was looking at these things every single day. It's like every female in our family wasn't safe around him. He was addicted to the pornography. And I think this is why he was so perpetual in his victimizing everybody. I think that my brother-in-law thought I was equivalent or would respond in the same way that the women on the pages of the pornographic magazines, the way that they looked, that they were erotic or aroused or enjoyed it. And I think he firmly believed that, that I welcomed his advances towards me, that I wanted him to touch me, that I would really enjoy it once he was able to get his hands on me. It's clear that the most disturbing issue of pornography has to be its long-term effect on society. And if you think that pornography is too prevalent now, well, just wait. Virtual reality, digital delivery systems, interactive TV, they are all on the horizon. Currently, we have millions of young men consuming hardcore pornography on a daily basis. As they get older, how is this going to affect their relationships with women? And the larger question, how will it affect the community? What will the future hold for women 
who are raised in a society where they are dehumanized by a multi-billion dollar pornography industry. An industry that portrays them as sexually aroused by humiliation, exploitation, and molestation. As a child, I just hid out inside myself. And what that meant was, in school, all my, my entire grade school experience was about trying not to be seen. I remember being on the playground, for example, and watching other children playing, but I couldn't really play. Just couldn't play. The assumption for me, and I'm not alone, is that I was so bad, I was so tainted, that I couldn't let anybody know. As a society, we have yet to reach a consensus regarding the effects of pornography, or what we should do about it. On the other hand, the pornography industry isn't waiting around for our verdict. They will continue to mainstream their products into our communities. They will continue to wield more social and political power with their enormous profits. They will continue to disavow any responsibilities for harm caused by their actions. And they will continue to profit from the dehumanization of women and children. Already one out of every four women are sexually abused by the age of 20. What's that worth? What are the consequences if we continue to allow pornography to saturate our communities and influence our children?